ズハンマーいけー Welcome back everybody, a pink lemon here, wondering what if Hell's Hammer was an attack type. Hell's Hammer is a right-spinning balance type owned by Bird Kazami in the anime and manga, and even though Bird Kazami has yet to win a battle, hashtag Bird deserves better, you can help me win the battle against the YouTube algorithm by subscribing. It's easy, it's free, helps out the channel, and now, together we can conquer this website. Anyways, ever since Hell's Hammer released, people have been wondering how is this a balance type? I mean, look at it, it's textbook attack type design. Three large wings with gaps in between for recoil, it's the same as Dransword and Phoenix Wing. But thanks to Hex, it keeps it still and lets it counterattack. Or at least that's what I would say if it was consistent. Using Hell's Hammer is a gamble every time. The attack shape blade ruins its stamina, and the stationary bit ruins its attack power. So, what if we turned Hell's Hammer into an attack type by using the potential smash attack in its blade to turn Hell's Hammer into a powerful destabilizer? In that case, I'd like you to meet Hell's Hammer 560 Taper, a destabilizing attacker meant to pester and wear down its opponents with its powerful down smash. 560 adds weight that Hell's Hammer severely lacks, but it also adds imbalance as it's not shaped to the blade, helping our combo with recoil and knocking down its opponents. Meanwhile, Taper gives Hell's Hammer plenty of aggression, while the sloped portion of the bit lets it knock opponents off balance, as when it leans, it will contact opponents and cause them to lean too. I also want to clear up a common misconception about Hell's Hammer. Most people think Hell's Hammer has great upper attack because of the sloped looking blades, but they tend to point out here as the primary point of contact as you would on a three-winged attack type. However, because it was made for down smash, there aren't many combos that get the blade low enough to hit the underside of its opponent's blades. As well as this, the plastic portion on Hell's Hammer's blade stops this from being its primary point of contact. Instead, most of the blade's weight is concentrated here, in the thickest part of the wing, giving it more smash attack than upper, and you can also tell this is where its primary contact point is, as this is where you see the most wear, as this is where the blade has been hitting. That's why I chose what I chose versus the more common 360 low flat combo. This combo is also fun thematically as it uses parts from both of the previous Hell's Bays, almost like a fusion of all of Bird's partners. With that out of the way though, we're now going to put our new Hell's Hammer combo up against three levels of Beyblade battles to put its attack power to the test. We'll be doing a best of three, so the first competitor to two points wins. To the stadium. For our first battle, we'll be putting Hell's Hammer up against Viper Tail to see how well this new combo handles a high recoil stamina type and to see whose down smash is superior. Hell's Hammer already showcasing its impressive destabilization by repeatedly barraging Viper Tail and winning with a sleep out. Viper Tail showcases its impressive recoil and counters Hell's Hammer, making the score now 1 to 2. Hell's Hammer uses Viper Tail's recoil against it and wins with a knockout. Despite being off balance, Viper Tail wears down Hell's Hammer and wins with a sleep out, making the score now 3 all. Hell's Hammer immediately knocks Viper Tail off balance and keeps it that way, letting it win with a sleep out, making it the winner of round one. Hell's Hammer starts off the round strong by blocking Viper Tail's extreme dash and countering, winning with a knockout.
Viper Tail wears down Hell's Hammer and dodges all its attacks, letting it win with a sleep out, making the score now 2 to 1. Hell's Hammer retaliates and with a 1 2 punch knocks out Viper Tail, making it the winner of round 2, making it the winner of the match. Well, unlike most opponents, Viper Tail's extra recoil hindered it more than it helped, as thanks to Hell's Hammer's lower recoil, it stopped it from being countered and let it knock Viper down for the victory. For our next battle, we're going to battle Leon Claw to see how well Hell's Hammer does against a mobile opponent with high stamina and less recoil. Hell's Hammer soaks up Leon Claw's attacks, causing it to waste stamina, letting it win with a spin finish. Leon Claw nearly lands a knockout, ruining Hell's Hammer's stamina and letting it win with a spin finish. Hell's Hammer once again lands a two-hit combo and knocks out Leon Claw, making the score now 3 to 1. Leon Claw dodges Hell's Hammer's extreme dash and counters with its own to win with a sleep out. Hell's Hammer dodges and strikes when Leon Claw is most off balance, winning with a knockout, making it the winner of round one. Leon Claw knocks the wind out of Hell's Hammer and wins with a sleep out. Hell's Hammer lands an aerial attack on Leon Claw early on, setting it up to completely destabilize it and win with a sleep out. Leon Claw lets Hell's Hammer nudge it into the extreme line and knocks it out, making the score now 1 to 3. Hell's Hammer, with its patented two hit combo, sets up Leon Claw and then uses the extreme line to accelerate towards it and land an extreme finish, making it the winner of round two and the winner of the match. Surprisingly, despite Leon's extra defenses, thanks to Hell's Hammer's destabilizing attacks, our combo was able to keep its opponent off balance and strike at the perfect time for round winning knockouts. For our final battle, our new combo will be battling our ultimate defense combo from our previous video, which you guys voted and fittingly named Wyvern Cyclone to put Hell's Hammer's pure attack power to the test. Hell's Hammer tries to wear Wyvern down, but it retaliates and lands a knockout. Hell's Hammer and Wyvern Cyclone trade X dashes back and forth, ruining Wyvern's balance and letting Hell's Hammer barely win with a sleep out. Making the score now 1 to 2. Unfortunately, Hell's Hammer's barrages only let Wyvern X dash more and counters it for a knockout, making Wyvern Cyclone the winner of round 1.
Impel's Hammer gets Wyvern to waste its stamina X-dashing and ruins its balance, letting it win with a spin finish. Hell's Hammer once again showcasing its amazing destabilization by barraging Wyvern and winning with yet another spin. Hell's Hammer tries to land on Wyvern with an X dash, but Wyvern's sloped blade counters it and lands a knockout, making the score now 2 all. Hell's Hammer knocks Wyvern off balance yet again and wins with another sleep out. Despite hefty blows from both opponents, Wyvern Cyclone is put off balance and lets Hell's Hammer win with a sleep out, making it the winner of round two. In another X Dash heavy battle, Hell's Hammer interrupts Wyvern Cyclone and lands an extreme finish, making the score now 3 0. Wyvern Cyclone once again uses the X-Line to counter Hell's Hammer and land a knockout. And despite an explosive clash that almost knocks out both bays, they both stand their ground and the round ends in a draw. And in a final showcase of its strategy, Hell's Hammer weakens Wyvern Cyclone just enough to tap it into the extreme zone, making it the winner of round three, and the winner of the match. Wow, that was a close match, and I genuinely didn't think Hell's Hammer would push through, but here we are. Ultimately, thanks to this combo's focus on causing imbalance and wearing down stamina, it made it the perfect opponent to fell our ultimate defense type. Well, Hell's Hammer's performance was surprising to say the least, the movement from Taper and the weight from 560 seemed to help, but the contact points on the Hell's Hammer Blade still failed to deliver consistently explosive attacks. That being said, this combo most definitely improved its smash and down smash capabilities, as the Bay was consistently knocking its opponents off balance, causing them to scrape, or giving our combo the opportunity for a knockout once they had bad stadium contact. Despite that, this combo's stamina was rather lackluster, even with Taper and its speed left a lot to be desired. I don't know why it was so slow. Not only this, but the lightweight blade meant that Hell's Hammer had to rely a lot on its early attacks to finish the job or risk losing with a spin finish. Luckily, against Viper Tail, Hell's Hammer was able to take advantage of its height to topple its stamina and use its opponent's high recoil to compensate for its own and land knockouts. Despite the win, however, Leon Claw seemed to pull one over on our combo, with resilient defenses and a fair bit more stamina than what Hell's Hammer could handle. And yet, even against our very own defense type Wyvern Cyclone combo, Hell's Hammer managed to eke out a close match. As despite not having quite enough attack power to break Wyvern's defenses, it took advantage of Wyvern's greatest weakness, that being its balance, to land a victory. Overall, I don't think I can call this combo the ultimate attack type, as the Hell's Hammer Blade still leaves too much to be desired, and you're probably better off just using 360 and Hex and just launching really hard, as it just doesn't have the speed, power, or weight to compete with other attack types. That's enough out of me though, what do you think of this Hell's Hammer combo, and how would you have tried to improve Hell's Hammer? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to leave a like if you enjoyed the video, and subscribe because we just hit 2,000 subscribers, which means thanks to your vote, we'll be doing another I Try and Beat Your Combos video for our 2K special, this time Beyblade X edition. So make sure you leave your comments with your combos below for a chance to be featured in an upcoming video. Until then, 
I've been a Pink Lemon, and I hope you have a great day. <laughs>